decision to step down. Everybody wants to know the reason, and the reason is very simple. Every time somebody asked me how long I was going to go, I would always say, as long as my health allows me to do it. But deep down inside, I knew that the only thing that would speed that up if I did not feel that I was any longer the right man for the job. I'm not going to say the best man because I never thought I was the best at anything. But 15 years at Kansas, I thought I was the right man. And this time at North Carolina, I thought I was the right man. I no longer feel that I am the right man for the job. Now that's real emotion. So yeah. humble. What a class act. Uh, look who's joining us now, my guy, Coach Seth Greenberg. Seth, great to have you with us. What's your reaction uh, to Roy stepping down and, and what you just heard from him right there? I was surprised but not shocked. But what Roy Williams was talking to, the culture of college basketball has changed. Uh, Roy Williams is about relationships. He's about helping build bridges for people to cross. He's about uh, developing real relationships and watching guys go through the process. Uh, you know, he's not about one and done. He's not about uh, the transfer portal. He's not about even probably NIL. He's about coaching and the relationships that you develop when you're a coach. Uh, if you ever listen, had a chance to listen to Marcus Page's senior night speech, you'd better understand what I'm talking about. That type of relationship is really hard to find in the culture of college basketball. And I think that's what took Roy Williams away from North Carolina. It's not the coaching. It's not the teaching. It's not the competition. It's not the grind. It's the relationship aspect of it. And when he talks about, I'm not the right man for the job now, uh, because the job is different. It's a different job. It's not a young man's job. It's not an old man's job. But the job is different. And unless you understand what the new culture of college basketball is all about and you are all in, uh, then you know what? It's hard to be successful. Three point guards in three years. His, one of his, his two best big guys that came in as freshmen are going to be gone next year. One and dones is not what Roy Williams is about because you don't develop those rich relationships with your players in one year, in seven months. So I think he looked in the mirror and said, you know what? This is not why I got into coaching. And I'd well, rather coach, step his, away than continue to do it this way. Coach, so wh how would you sum up? Is that how you would sum up his legacy? Like, I, it strikes me that within a half dozen years after Dean Smith, like, how do you follow Dean Smith? It wasn't immediate, but within a half dozen years, pretty, pretty close. How do you follow that and establish your own legacy? But he certainly did establish his own legacy. What is that legacy? How would you sum it up? Well, first of all, there was Bill Guthridge, and then it was Matt Doherty, and then, then, it, was, then right. it was Coach Williams. But how, how I'd sum it up, look, you can look at the three national championships. You can look at the guys that made it to the NBA. You can look at the 900 wins, and all those things are great. To Roy Williams, his legacy is the relationships and the players. That's what he's going to miss the most. He's going to miss practice. He's going to miss competition. He's going to miss games. But to me, the void will be the relationships with the players. Helping someone get somewhere they can't get themselves. Building a bridge for someone to cross so they become, you know, great husbands and great fathers and successful in society. That's why he got into it. His legacy will be those hundreds of players whose lives he touched and help them become more prepared for the rest of their lives. Because that's why he got into coaching. Remember now, he took that North Carolina job for $4,500. He was running around all over North Carolina delivering calendars for Dean Smith. It wasn't about the money. The money found him because of the way things have changed. But the relationship well, thing is his legacy. Let me say this real quick, and then we can move on because you got you here, and I want to ask a couple of questions about the Final Four. Uh, Roy Williams is one of the great coaches that has ever coached no in doubt. this game. He's phenomenal, and he's a great man as well. I love the guy personally. But I want to say this, that transfer portal you brought or you just brought up a little while ago, Coach, there's over 1,000 kids in that transfer portal. 1,100. Over 1,000 kids. It's changing the landscape of college basketball, and it's going to compromise high school kids coming out, coming to yep. college, because you're going to have coaches looking for dudes in that transfer portal yep. before they're even looking at the, college, the high school athletes. So we got to keep our eyes on that and see what percolates from that. And in terms of Roy Williams, you brought up Matt Doherty. I mean, you, you brought up Doherty, the former coach at North Carolina, right? Yep. Um, he was horrible. And people forget about this. North Carolina had sunk. Yep. Had yeah. sunk. They were in an players. abyss. And, and Roy Williams came, 
and resurrected. Yeah, that's what's crazy and, and about that, it. That, that, that's what's so special about it. It wasn't that he and he didn't inherit it from Dean Smith. He they sunk and he revitalized them to what we knew See, them that to be. That might be his legacy. That's, his, is that's that he, the legacy, is that he brought even North more Carolina so than Kansas. Back. But I want to go to this NCAA thing. What's the best story in the Final Four coming into this weekend? Coach, you know where I stand. Where do yeah, you I stand? I, I, look, and that's a great story. Is it the pursuit of perfection for Gonzaga? It might be. Is it Kelvin Sampson's kind of rising from the abyss and taking over a Houston program that was absolutely, you talk about dead in the water. Absolutely no interest, apathetic, and dead in the water. No doubt, there's no doubt about it. Is it Mick Cronin, who no one thought was going to be successful, who no one thought would fit in Westwood, all of a sudden going through a number one, a number two, beating Michigan State and getting to the Final Four? Or is it Baylor, who had that long pause and everyone said, wait a second, they lost something. I'm not sure what the best story is. I think that right now we have two really interesting games, and we've got a lot of stories. But you know what, Steve Vidae, and listening to you before I got on the air, you're right, the most interesting story probably isn't on the men's side. It's on the female side with Paige Beckett. I mean, this is the Steph Curry of women's basketball. You got Huskies. This girl, she's special. This girl can pull up from 30. Yeah. She can pull up from 30. Get familiar. I'm watching this girl shoot the basketball. I'm like, oh, my Lord. This girl is something special. As you were saying, and a basketball freshman. Savant. And a freshman that a freshman that's the player of the year. Lord, Lord. That's all I wanted to say about that. Go ahead, man. Well, yeah, you're right. Well, that probably is a story of the tournament of, 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 of college basketball. That's a story. Yeah. She got me glued. I'll be watching UConn her. Is the story of college basketball. I'll be basketball. watching of her. Of course, Molly. Yeah, we we Go know ahead, that. Max. Yeah, hey, let me let me but let's get to our Thanks. games real quickly because everyone's talking about like the Houston okay. the Houston Baylor game is going to be an absolute rock fight. It's going to be an absolute draw a line in the sand each and every play. The ball is going to go up in the rim. And you're going to see bodies flying all over the place. You've got two terrific backcourts. It's like looking in the mirror. But the interesting one also, can UCLA get this game against Gonzaga to a crawl? The uglier the game gets against Gonzaga, the better it is for UCLA. And UCLA figured out to beat. A way to beat Alabama in a high-scoring game. 23 points in overtime. Obviously, mm-hmm. had, to, had to figure out a way to beat Michigan in a slow-paced game. Beat Michigan State in a fist fight. We talk about UCLA. I'm not sure we give them the respect they deserve. They've earned their way to the Final Four. We can, whether you like it or not, that's the great thing about the NCAA tournament. Right? You don't just arrive there. You earn your way there. Are they the teams that people thought were going to be there? No. But UCLA and Houston have earned their way, and I think we're going to have a great Final Four on the men's side. No question. I just want to say real quick, uh, congrats to Juwan Howard on winning AP Coach of the Year. Huge. Great job. At at his former school. Great job. Unbelievable story. No question. Well deserved. All right, Coach. We will chat with you uh, next week. We'll have a lot to discuss. Looking forward to it. Have a wonderful weekend. Same to you guys. All right. All right, Coach. When we come back, guys, we go to the NBA as Katie recovers from injury and James Harden. 